interesting request. Okay, Mike, let's hope you're going to jump up on here now. And Mike is with um, EPCO, which is another charity I work with, um, and they work with the European. So, hello, Mike, how are you, mate? Hi, mate, very good to see you again. Yeah, really good to see you too, Paul. How are things? Yeah, really good, mate, really good. Tough times, as you said, but there are more important things to, to think about, you know, not push it too hard. And uh, we all got to be safe, ultimately. But uh, I totally agree with what you say about the exercise side of it. It's it's tailor-made for this situation and will keep people in a good frame of mind, you know? Frame of mind is so important, isn't it? I mean, I have a very cushy life. I, I don't mind admitting that. I've got a very lucky to have a wonderful family and, uh, and a nice situation. I've kept working with Sky as well throughout all of this. I've been very lucky, but there's still a part of me that finds wrestles with this mentally. I'm not going to pretend I haven't found it difficult. I'm sure so many have. But for some, it, that's a challenge too far for so many. Uh, for you, I, I suppose I want to know... the extreme end of the spectrum what did golf give you what what's your story first of all mike and what did golf do for you well actually it was two it was halloween just gone was the fifth anniversary of a motorbike accident uh, i was in i was unfortunately hit off my motorbike on the way to work and i had, ended up I had quite severe injuries to my left side but i ended up having my leg amputated and uh, obviously it's the mental side of things is quite prevalent now in today's society. But back then, even though it was only five years ago, I was really struggling in hospital and I didn't understand why I was struggling. And it was, it was a depression and a mental breakdown in those early weeks straight away. But I remember seeing Edgar, I, f I heard about them through a friend and saw their website with videos of guys like Manuel de la Santos and Juan Postigo guys, plane literally stood on one leg with no prosthetic and I thought if they can do it I'm definitely gonna this is it this is golf is gonna be my uh, it's the savior it saved my life you said the comment earlier and you didn't want to sound cl cliche but that's an absolute fact it saved my life because in that hospital bed when I was in a really tough dark place it pulled me out of it it gave me like a focus to look at and I'm going to get on with my life and get out of here get on that golf course didn't know what I was going to do didn't know how I was going to play all those challenges came later but golf definitely got me on that track and then COVID in March when this happened yeah. it was I can understand what you guys in England are going through now because in Wales I don't know whether everybody knows but we were two weeks behind England. England opened the course, started to open the courses, and we're all sat here going, oh my God, I'm desperate to play golf yeah. because I'm desperate to get out there and I've got to wait another two weeks. And all my mates are putting their posts up. The game exploded in, in March and we got more people playing. And now we've got that little process to go through. So I'd rather people think of if they can get out to play, great, if the regulations change. But if they don't, it's only four weeks, as you said. Think of the excitement it's going to bring when you can get back on that course. So it's it's just an enthralling it's an enthralling thing to look forward to. I think. Do you think you'd have been able to? Go. Do you think you'd have been able to make the recovery mentally that you have um, without the sport? No, that's that's an absolute certainty because I was recently there was a boy in the bed opposite me and we stayed in touch and he was a motorbike accident and he was in a really really bad way his leg was horrific but they repaired his leg so he was still suffering I sent him a message on my my anniversary we call it um, I sent Will a message a boy in Cardiff and I said I remember seeing you Will when I came into that ward how much pain you were in and it really thought right gave me a little kick up the back so I stopped feeling sorry for stuff look how much pain that guy's in yeah. will sent me a message back and said i was thinking exactly the same thing about you when they were wheeling you through on the trolley when you came in <laughs> oh, so God. you know you always think oh there's a guy worse off well we were both that guy to each other and now we, like, we've got a nice friendship going we stay in touch and you you bring each other on but they were they were people i saw struggling on the ward older gentlemen with say diabetes who'd lost limbs and they were struggling with the mental side of it what are they gonna do but it, it, golf just 
got me out of that doldrum, and now it's my life. I've, you know, it's just incredible what golf has given me. I've met people like yourself in Port Rush and David Coulthard speaking that David Coulthard. Andy Andy Cole, Cole. I love that. I love everyone. <laughs> Your chin's not so. quite as big, is it? <laughs> oh my god! But I met him in, and speaking to him in Crons, and I would never dreamt of doing things like those uh, without golf. So it's it's opened up my life to me. It's an incredible story, that mate. Um, I wanted you to come on to tell us a bit about what you're all about and what golf's done. You couldn't have done it any better. Um, thank you so much, mate. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Okay, mate. mate. See you on the other side. Thanks, Take mate. care, pal. Bye, bye. That's awesome, isn't it? Um, Mike, what an inspiration of uh, how he is. His mindset, sure, that's amazing. But actually, um, it's how he's used the game to move on in his life and make the changes that he wanted to, to make. And um, for so many, that opportunity is not going to be there. Let's find it.